everybody, this is Dan, aka Entertainment WF. The following video is an introductory video for cryptography. If you don't know what cryptography is, I recommend maybe looking it up briefly before we begin. I want to cover a basic cipher, just so maybe you have something cool to show your friends. Anyway, usually the first introductory cipher that you usually learn are the type called substitution ciphers. But there are different types of substitution ciphers, i.e. special cases. Today we're going to be covering the shift cipher, if you can't see that, the stupid blotch there, I know. Anyway, before that I just need to briefly mention some, some notation. Whenever I write down this, this blackboard Z with an M, that is the, the set of integers on M, that means every integer up to m, and in this case will be positive integers, including zero. So you can think of zm, uh, zeta m, as, as the positive integers union with zero, i.e. it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to m minus two, m minus one, m. And usually when you're dealing with a shift cipher, it's 26, but it doesn't need to be 26. Because uh, 26 is the alphabet. Because it could be another number system. Usually you play around with numbers with this. Scripty P, i.e. a blackboard P, that is the finite set of plain text. Meaning, any possible plain text will stay inside of this finite set. So this could be like your favorite word, like cat or hat. Or, I don't know, let's say, how about automobile? I know that one's a little bit different than the other two, but let's just go with that. Uh, and then there's script DC, which is a blackboard italicized C, which is the finite set of ciphertext. Ciphertext is what you obtain after you do an encryption of, say, plain text, i.e. the things that, the elements inside of P. Ciphertext is what usually what, like when you say you want to hide a message, you pass the ciphertext over to, say, a person. Like, say you have a friend, Bob, over there, and why well, want to send a message to him without revealing what I actually want to say in written words or on a computer? I would send them the ciphertext and hope that nobody in between, usually called Eve, or Oscar, in the scenario of a theoretical computer scientist would notion, uh, would try to intervene, toggle something, and try to figure it out before it reaches Bob, without knowing, well, could know the scheme or the encryption and decryption procedure, but doesn't know the key necessarily. This italicized bullet blackboard K is this finite set of possible keys. This is the key space. And in this case, it's the same as script P and script DC. So it's the finite set. The ciphertext, plaintext, and the keys are all the exact same. ZM. So it can be any one of those guys. And so we label this as a crypto system or a cipher, which is a five tuple. If you don't know, I'm not used to dealing with tuples. It's kind of like when you deal with a function, you feed it one parameter. Uh, a crypto system or cipher, I'm going to stick with cipher because I prefer that terminology, uh, has five of these guys. So this is the plain text, that's the cipher text, that's the key space, this is the encryption, and this is the decryption rule. So the encryption rule is when you, fe you feed it with something that's in P. So you can think of it as a string X. String X can be X0, X1, all the way up to XN. This guy can be your favorite word, like cat. So I'll write down cat here. Just because cats are fun. 
or dog, but let's just stick with cat. And your ciphertext could be is a Y0, Y1, all the way up to Y. And, and in this case, the, the ciphertext is given to us as the same length as the plain text, because in the shift cipher we don't modify the lengths of the strings. Some ciphers do, so wa watch out for that. So for an encryption rule to work, there has to be a decryption rule such that if you feed the plain text element to the encryption rule, that the decryption rule will take whatever you encrypted, i.e. what I just labeled here is Y, uh, and then what will happen is you'll spit out the original X. And I'm going to label it, usually usually some textbooks li and papers like to use just the full string when they're dealing with the encryption rules and the decryption rules. I prefer using the symbols. So I'm just going to say XI, where XI or YI is between 0 and the cardinality of X, i.e. the ordered set of X or just the length of that word. So cat is 3, dog would be 3, oh... So like how many letters are there? Just, just, just how many letters are in that word? That is the cardinality of that string, or you can think of it just as the length. The encryption and decryption rule define what that cipher is, along with these guys up here. The encryption rule is ek of xi, or you could just say x, but we're just dealing with just the symbols because I just want to play around with just the symbols. Uh, where xi plus K modulo M is the encryption rule. I.e., if, you if you're not used to what a modulo operator is, is think of it like remainder, or you could think of it as a cycle. So the encryption rule, as we said, was you take the symbol and you add some value to it. So it this is a positive integer, or it could be a negative integer. K right here can be, essentially, it can be any, uh, any integer as long and providing that it stays within ZM. So it, it's going to be positive, and it has to be within the scope of whatever M is. In our case, we're going to do our example of Z26, but or we're playing around with the alphabet. That's basically what I'm saying here. Okay, so now the decryption rule is taking the YI you get from this. So YI is equivalent to saying the encryption rule here. So you have XI here, and you feed it, X, the, you feed it into the function, which is, by the way, injective. You can't, you don't, you want to make sure that the mapping is only can go one way, and it can't have multiple things touching it. So you can't think of it like, like another X can reach the same symbol when we encrypt it. We don't want that in this case because we're dealing with a monoalphabetic cipher because we don't want to be encrypting more than one of these letters and secondly, none of these should be overlapping on each other anyway unless the symbol is the same as the other ones which land on that same symbol because it's a monoalphabetic cipher. And for the decryption rule, it's simply just subtracting the K. So you just take your ciphertext symbol, or you can just think of it like if you took your big, your word cat, and you took each one of the symbols out, you minus K as its numeric form, and then you just simply get back your original word. Now let's do an example. An example, we're going to use cat again. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a K which is equal to 3. So I'm going to pick K is equal to 3. So this is our key. Our key is equal to 3. And our word's going to be cat. So this is, we'll just call this X. So, so X0 is equal to C. Well, symbol C. X1. We're going to define these all as just to be proper in our notation. We're going to be defining them. So we're just saying this guy is assigned to that. So X0 is, a, is assigned the symbol C. And what we're going to do is we need to allocate these to numeric symbols that are in Z26. Because we can, we can play with this in Z26. Where Z26 is the alphabet. So we need to write out the alphabet. 
okay. So, how do we do this? We start at the number zero, the, the integer zero is letter, is the letter A, and you simply write this down. You just go two is C, three is D, four is E, five is F, six is G, seven is H, eight is I, nine is J, 10 is K, 11 is L, 12 is M, 13 is N, 14 is O, 15 is P, 16 is Q, 17 is R, 18 is S, 19 is T, 20 is U, and 21 is V, uh, 22 is W, 23 is X, 24 is Y, and 25 is Z. Notice that Z is 25, not 26, because we're starting at counting at zero, which is a very, it's a very convention, very conventional thing. You always do this when we're dealing with counting. Okay, so now what we do is we just look in each one of these. So if we find a C, so we'll just say this is equivalent to saying two. So if I see a C, it's going to be two. If I see an A, it's a zero. If I see a T, the T is 19. So now what we're going to do to encrypt cat, we're going to say, okay, now we're going to take, we're going to encrypt 2. 2 plus 3 mod 26. This is equal to 5. Note I'm not using the congruence sign because we're not use, dealing with a class of these guys. We're just dealing with just the operation. So don't be confused. Uh, EK of next is 0. So we take 0. You do 0 plus 3 mod 26. And you end up with 3. And you take EK. EK, where are you? 19. So we take 19. We plus 3. And... If my arithmetic is right, last time I checked, this is 22. <laughs> now, when we write out the ciphertext, take each one of these guys, so we have 5, 3, and 22. Now we write these at the symbols. So now 5 is F. Keep in note that I'm using lowercase letters for the plain text and uppercase letters for the ciphertext. This is just a convention that just lack to avoid confusion between when you're encrypting and decrypting, so you know what ciphertext is versus plain text. It's just a convention. Uh, now, 3 is D, and uh, 22, 22 is W. So now, now if we look at this again, we end up with our cat becoming is FDW. So now that's how you encrypt it. So now so now we can say y is equal to fdw. Now to decrypt it, it's very simple. All you have to do is just subtract off the k. So you take f, which is 5. So you take 5 minus 3, which equals 2. Then you have 3 minus 3 equals 0. And then you have 22 minus 3, which is equal to 19. And long and behold, that's c, that's a, that's t. And you got your back, your x. So so dk, whoops, you end up with dk of y of uh, f d w is equal to cat. There, you're done. It's that simple. So if you want to show off your skills with basic ciphers, feel free to have fun with this guy. Uh, there's much more complicated stuff in cryptography, but this is just a basic breather on how we deal with encryption and decryption in a monoalphabetic system. And note that this is probably one of the easiest ciphers. In fact, the K equals a three is known as a Caesar cipher because this is historically known that Caesar used this cipher. And on that note, if you have any questions, leave them below. And thank you very much and have yourself a beautiful day.